Hi, in this video, I'll be running through a workflow for importing site data into Rhinoceros using Grasshopper and a Grasshopper plugin called Caribou. That data will be coming from OpenStreetMap, so it will be free um, and available in many, if not sort of most major cities in the world, although it is a little bit uh, Western centric. So this kind of data is useful for the kind of baseline site model information, you know, it's a sort of typical cadastral data that you might start a map off with and augment later. However, because it's crowdsourced, OpenStreetMap data also often has uh, interesting aspects to it or interesting information that you might not be able to get anywhere, anywhere else um, or not be able to get anywhere else as easily. All right, so this um, method works on Rhino 6 or Rhino 7, it works on Rhino for Mac or Rhino for Windows. And what we're gonna end up with is something like this, where we have a site model, um, or the start of a site model that is sort of mixing between uh, three-dimensional um, geometry of built form, a lot of sort of two-dimensional geometry for things like roads, parcels, building outlines, as well as uh, point data that could be various different things. So let's start fresh um, and maybe, yeah, let's start fresh and let's install the caribou plugin to start off with so if you're on rhino 7 what you can do what you should do is type in package manager and open up the package manager which will look like this and then once you're in the package manager you can type in caribou find it hit install and when it's finished installing what you would then need to do is close down Grasshopper, close down Rhino, close down all the copies of Rhino that might be running, and then open it back up. When you open it back up, you should have a tab in Grasshopper called Caribou, and there should be icons that look roughly like this. If you're on uh, Rhino 6, that package manager command won't work, in which case the easiest way to go is to open up one of the example files from Caribou. So I'll link to those below the video. You would download that Grasshopper file, open it up, and when you open it up, Grasshopper itself should sort of prompt you to install that missing plugin. Then you would close Grasshopper and Rhino and open it back up as we did with Rhino 7. Okay, so before we get stuck into Grasshopper, let's actually get our site data first. So to do so, we're going to go to the OpenStreetMap website, openstreetmap.org. Um, we're going to navigate around to wherever in the world your site is. And so once we've gotten to our site, we're going to go up and we're going to click export. And so this export button is going to give us this window, which is our area that we're going to crop our data from or crop our data to. Uh, so it's probably easiest to click manual selection and then to um, yeah, draw a rectangle that contains all the data that you want to download. When you're done, you can then click export. What might happen, particularly if you've got a site that is very dense with data, or if you drew a very large rectangle, when you hit export, it might give you an error saying something about the API, something about too many features requested, and the reason that's come up is that you're kind of asking it for too much data at once. So if that happens, what you can do instead is you can try using this link rather than the export button to download the data. And then if that doesn't work, what you can do is basically sort of cut your site up into overlapping squares. So in this case, maybe I might take, rather than doing that big box, I might take a sort of left-hand side box here and then pair that with a right-hand side box. If you're doing that, say if you've got two boxes like this, what you would want to make sure though is that there is some degree of kind of overlap where the first box and the second box, you know, kind of have, maybe not quite that much, but you know, where those kind of, where the rectangles overlap rather than just sort of touch. And then you can you download those files individually and link them into Caribou. It will kind of stitch them back together for you. So we've downloaded the OpenStreetMap file. Let's go back into Grasshopper. And what we're gonna do to start off with is to create a file path. 
path component. And so what this is going to do is it's going to point Grasshopper to the file that we just downloaded. So we're going to right click, we're going to go select one existing file, and we're going to um, find the file that we just downloaded and referenced it in. Um, if you want to stitch files together, you can select um, multiple files, so select many existing files instead. So that's uh, just a standard Grasshopper component. What we're going to do now is place a bunch of caribou components to sort of set up what we're going to do. So these components here called pass, they're the ones that kind of extract geometry from the file we just made. And they extract three different types of geometry. So we've got a nodes component, we have a ways component, and we have a buildings component. So nodes are effectively uh, point type geometries. So OpenStreetMap has sort of two primary kinds of geometry. It has geometry that comes through, or that is sort of point based. So that might be a thing like, um, you know, a tree or a stop sign or the location of a statue or a bus stop, you know, things that are kind of singular or singular-ish locations in space. Uh, ways are regions or kind of areas or lines. So a way might be a like waterfront or a river, it might be a road, it might be a building outline, it might be sort of maybe an administrative boundary. There's a few different things or many different things that ways can be. But effectively they come through into rhinoceros as polylines. And then buildings are sort of a special case where that they're ways which normally draw the outlines of a building and plan but because that information tends to have information about how high the building is we can kind of combine those together to make 3d form so for each of these different types of components they have pretty similar inputs they want a file path and they want a set of features so i'm just going to go ahead and connect the file path to each of them and then for the features what i'm going to go ahead and select the specify features component and then i'm going to click this button called specify features and so this window is going to list um, all the kind of categories of information that openstreetmap has so every piece of geometry in openstreetmap has different types of categories those categories are not exclusive um, something might be for example tagged as a road type but it might also have information about, say, whether it's a one-way street or not. Or a building might be tagged as both a cafe and an apartment. So these are all the kind of top-level primary categories of OpenStreetMap information. So public transport, for example, has things like platforms and stations. Uh, railway has things like various, you know, the actual sort of light rail or rails themselves, but also things like railway crossings. Um, some things like buildings are kind of more about program or even type. So we have things like chapel or church or farm or dormitory. And then we have things like amenity that might be more about sort of, yeah, more program oriented, things like bars or cafes or ATMs. So if you just want everything for your site, you can select everything um, and just sort of hoover it all down. Um, maybe for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to be a bit more selective. And then I'm going to bring through, let's say, all the buildings, maybe some amenity, um, maybe railway, public transport, and I'm going to select highway as well. And I mentioned that just because highways in OpenStreetMap uh, lingo include things like sort of cycleways as well as sort of like, say, you know, intercity highways and things like primary, secondary and tertiary roads are what we might think of as sort of, you know, standard roads, not just... Um, fast moving car highways. So I've selected all those things. I'm gonna hit update selection, and then I'm gonna begin connecting the features from here through to the features for each of these components. And you can sort of see as I've done that, um, the data has started to pop into Rhino. Um, so if I kind of zoom out, this is all the data that we just selected. Um, so we have the nodes which you can see here in green so those are the points 
we have the ways, which are the outlines, the curves, the regions, the areas, and then we have the buildings, which are the, yeah, the buildings, the build form. As we can see, not all buildings have um, height data, although, although maybe um, other cities would be better on that front than Wellington. So that data is all in here. We can then go through, if we wanted to, we can bake it as you would anything else from Grasshopper. We can bake it into Rhino so that we can you know, select it, export it, modify it, do whatever we want with it. We could also then obviously continue working with that geometry in Grasshopper itself if we wanted to. Uh, and then if we wanted to, we could even go back and we could sort of change those features. So maybe I'm really interested in the craft and the geology and I don't know, the telecom and tourism parts of the site. And then it'll go through and, you know, sort of update our data with a different data set. So these are all the things that came through, which are sort of mostly points and a few buildings there as well. So you can use the specify features to investigate your site, to kind of drill down into different types of information about the site. Um, sometimes these categories are a little bit cryptic, so it can be useful to kind of read the description to sort of see what's going on. Um, and the other thing I'll note is that if you make a panel component or a panel input, um, each of these blocks will give you some information about uh, everything that it found. So for example, it found eight items that are tagged with craft, zero items tagged with geology or telecom, but 67 with tourism. And then we can also use the other sort of text-based output here, the tags, to look at the outcomes of individual um, things. So this first node is has an address, it has a craft, it's a pottery store, I presume, and it has a website. So again, these may not be useful if you just want a backdrop for a render, or if you're just looking to kind of get a very general sense of the broader context, but it can be interesting if you're looking to kind of uh, zoom in or to kind of examine more specific elements of the site, or at least kind of more specific elements of the data that have been, that are provided or that are captured within that file. Okay, so this is the very quick introduction to Caribou. It does a bunch more things. I'll make a follow-up video that kind of digs into a bit more detail about what those things are. Um, so there's a few more advanced features, uh, things like how to bake this information with kind of layers that are labeled and colored uniquely, how to make kind of color keys and legends, how to sort of um, filter information or combine different filters in a sort of GIS-like manner. So that'll be in a follow-up video that'll be a bit longer. Uh, below, I'll link to some documentation for Caribou. So uh, the example files that I mentioned, as well as sort of more text-based descriptions of how it works. So follow those around if you're looking for more information as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching.